Okay, Dushmanthi uncle, thank you for joining again for the second session of the uh, photos with Shamataji and the and the golden moments that you spent with with her. Um, this is a lovely photo of Shamataji's holy lotus feet uh, at the weddings. Would you please uh, share with us your memories of that occasion? Yes, definitely. So um, the weddings were, you know, were held quite regularly after a, after the initial few years, and um, I was being persuaded to get married every year by Sri Mataji, and it was difficult to overcome my belief that to really get your full enlightenment, one had to be single. Anyway, eventually, Mother did. Uh, get me married. And this photo shows her feet. Uh, you can see some remnants of kumkum there. So this was after a puja and her feet had been all cleaned and so on. And then uh, the yogini, my uh, Sri Mashuchi, I was going to say my mother, which she is, Sri Mashuchi had got me married to. Uh, and I presented mother with these um, golden anklets uh, and she asked us to, of course, put it on her feet. Oh, beautiful. And, uh, and I took this photo. Now, my my wedding, as uh, some of the old leaders used to say, was a major saga of many years, uh, since I wasn't too keen, um, finally occurred. And I'll give a quick glimpse uh, of this is us getting married. And the you can guess wow. who the guy is. And um, the person I got married to is a yogini uh, Rajni from uh, Pune. Uh -huh. And that also sort of relates or links to, I think one of the things you asked me after we went, uh, we stopped recording, which was about the exhibition in India. That's right. Yeah. So this was on one of the India tours. Actually, this was 1985. So the tour was in 85. Uh -huh. And um, I was, uh, we were all accompanying mother and I was staying at the back now because there were uh, lots of newer yogis who obviously wanted to be close to mother and uh, suddenly I heard mother calling me at one of these exhibitions and so I went through the crowd and went in front and she just pointed at a table and uh, there was some fancy writing pads there, you know, really pretty ones which I would have never bought, you know, all decorated rather uh -huh. feminine. And she said, buy this. So of course I bought it. I, I picked it up. And then she moved along and said, come, come. And then she pointed at a pile of envelopes, also beautifully decorated, matching, said, buy this. So I bought them, you know, with no clue of uh -huh. why, because one, there was no need to ask. And we left the, uh, you know, after a while, we left the exhibit and went and Days passed, basically days of the tour. The tours used to be at one time two months, but since I was working, I could only do one month mm -hmm. in the second half of the tour. So one day I'm sitting uh, after coming off the buses the previous night, and you know, those were challenging times. Uh, in the morning, I was sitting with the yogis, uh, taking vibrations. I was with the collective, and I felt a tap on my shoulder, and it was an Indian yogi, and he said, uh, Mataji wants to see you. So uh, I thought, wow, this is bad because I had been ill. I was coughing. Uh, the bus rides were terrible, you know, the dust and everything. So I was physically unwell. And of course, the vibrations told me that there was a lot of tingling. And I was thinking, good God, got to go see mother. So he takes me out and I sit at the back of his um, scooter and yeah. he scoops along. And then he stops at some shop here to run some errands so there i'm waiting on the scooter completely clueless and then eventually he gets me uh to a house a yogi's house uh, where mother was staying and um i walk in and mother is sitting on a sofa at the far end of the room and the room is full of indian yogis and indian yogis and none of the westerners were there they were all back at the camp where i was this is and, in Pune or Ganapati Pune? Uh, Pune. This was in Pune, in Pune. And, um, 
And I went in and I thought, I, I mean, you know how, I mean, those who have been before mother, you just don't want to go in feeling catches. Yes. And I knew I was not in in a state to be there. But anyway, I, I made my way through this crowd, tiptoeing or stepping over people and got to the front. And as I went to mother's feet, my head was, you know, swimming with the thought, I'm going to be told off because, you know, in Sahaj, nothing's secret. So I go down to mother's feet and then I hear her voice saying to the leaders, look at his vibrations, feel them. Feel <laughs> his vibrations. <laughs> and my brain is going, what? And you know, the leader's going, uh, you know how they say in, in Marathi and all that, like, ha, ha, ho, ho, that stuff like that. <laughs> and here I am at the bottom going, okay. I was totally good. And then, and then she, mother says, you know, and then she moves her feet to let you know you can get up. And then she says, come with me. And so she leaves all this, lead. the room was full, so there must have been about 20 people, leaders and yogis, Indian yogis. And she takes me down a hallway into a side room and I go in there and I see a, a local yogi lady, her name was Mrs. Shivaleka, we called her. And uh, mother is sitting on, you know, mother goes and sits down on the bed. Uh -huh. So, and there's a girl in the room, an Indian girl. And um, I have no clue what's going on. So I go in there and, and uh, sit on mother's left and the girl is sitting on mother's right. She sit, her mother's on the bed. And then Mrs. Shirleka is standing up in the room looking at us. And then mother says, um, you know, introduces her, tells me this is Rajni. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, I mean, they, uh, there was no advance warning, absolutely not. And uh, I, you know, then mother says, uh, I'm going to get you engaged to her, words to that effect. I'm thinking engaged, you know, because that, that wasn't the case in the old days. You just went there, you know, you got matched. People wanted to be matched. Yes. Uh, and uh, got married. And um, then mother talks to Rajni as well in Marathi, I think. And then um, she, mother says, she opens a purse and says, oh, let me look in here. And she says, oh, mother said, I seem to have two rings, she said. <laughs> and, then she took, <laughs> and then she took out these, I'm telling you, I was, I was, it was surreal. I, I didn't know what was going on. I mean, I just couldn't think. Mm. And um, so she, she takes these rings out. She gives one to me and one to Rajni. And she tells me uh, to put a ring on Rajni's finger. And then she tells Rajni to put the other ring which came out of mother's purse onto my finger. And I said, okay, now you're engaged and keep it a secret now. We don't want anyone to know. I'm going, what? So, you know, <laughs> I'm telling you, it was just, I don't know. And then she told me, this is like her. She says, okay, you know, you're the witness to this engagement. And, and um, then mother said to me, um, you have to write to her. Okay, and I'm like, right. She said, yes, you have to write her letters regularly. Oh. And obviously, she made me buy the pad a week or two earlier <laughs> and the envelopes. <laughs> all these flowery. <laughs> she had arranged so, for I, mean, I was blushing. I mean, I'm probably blushing now, but with dark skin, you can't see it. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing, especially because uh, yeah. you had this condition, well, I'll call it conditioning or this, yeah, exactly. this, this little approach that, you know, if you're a spiritual person and, and you're looking for the eternal truth, then, you know, brahmacharya yeah. or, you know, you just stay single and, and carry on with your seeking. And here's yeah. Shumataji giving you. And I, I mean, she just... She, she probably suspected I might have done a runner if she had. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Who knows? Who knows? I probably wouldn't have dared to. But yeah, so that was, and then we were told uh, it was all the rage because mother used to tell me that I I, I needed to learn how to be romantic. <laughs> uh, did she? <laughs> 
<laughs> so what what's the kind of advice that you could give to perhaps some of the listeners who might appreciate I, I have I did not receive a, advice. She just told me that. And then she took me to watch some some movie in in India. You won't believe. I was so embarrassed by the whole movie. Which and, movie? Uh, I was sitting next to mother. <laughs> Watching a romantic movie. I mean... Oh my God, I don't know why I'm telling you all this. It's on video. We may have to delete this. Anyway, she said to me, you know, mother said, oh, you got to give Rajni some of the love you have for me. And I was thinking, what? <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, to cut a long story short, so Mrs. Sherlock uh, uh, was sort of our uh, point of contact. So we would go and meet uh, in her house. Mother would say, I've got to go meet her. So we'd meet, you know, we met once or twice. And, uh, you know, later mother told me about her history and I uh, found out that, you know, her parents had come to Sahaj and then she had joined them. And uh, uh, her father, when he was... Uh, getting older he actually went to mother apparently and uh, told mother that I give you my daughter and uh, mother accepted and so there was always that special relationship where she always seemed to treat Rajni like a child mm. uh, you know which was a very uh, nice thing to see so yes, yeah, so that that uh, I guess that was the background to me being suddenly married. Now I was blissed out, which is why I'm smiling like crazy. Beautiful couple. Yeah, because mother had uh, given me the same garland that she had been by holding and showing people, and she gave me the same shawl that she had been holding and showing yogis of how to dress. So I couldn't help but be uh, in a very nice state. Uh, oh. I was also late for the wedding, by the way. Um, uh -huh. uh, but uh, what did you do to the garlands uh, it's somewhere it's it's all in a box we moved you know yeah. we've got boxes in the garage that haven't been open for mm -hmm. nearly 25 years now um but yeah we kept we kept a lot of it it's just wonderful yes. mementos indeed so yeah. before that mother is kept saying to most of the yogis they're realized souls waiting you know to be born you've got to get married and things like that. And uh, so the end result after three plus years after we got married was um, was our first child, our daughter. And as soon as mother found out that um, we were going to, you know, there was a child on the way, she kept monitoring everything and kept telling us that you must tell me, uh, you know, when, when the baby is about to be born. Uh -huh. So um, when... Um, when the time came and we went to the hospital, I called mother and uh, she was in London. We were in America by that time. And uh, and mother said, OK, keep me informed and call me as soon as she's born. Uh -huh. So uh, I did I, you know, I did exactly that. And as soon as she was born on the phone, mother described exactly how she looked. I was just I was just standing there in a daze. Wow. And uh, she said, all right, she, her hair is really long and thick and she looks like this and that. And I just, you know, you, you already know who mother is. Yes. And then she said, you you will call her Priyambada, one who speaks sweetly and auspiciously. And she said, in America, they like short names. So you just call her Priya, Priya for short. Uh -huh. and, so, and so that's what we did. And mother told us, like many yogis know, that you keep her at home for 40 days. Yes. And uh, we did that. And two days after the confinement on the 42nd day, yes. uh, we hopped in a car and drove from Cincinnati uh, all the way to New York, where she was, she was uh -huh. to see her. And uh, my, my daughter did not want this photo here, but as a doting dad, I did. So this is mother with Priya when she was one month oh, and a bit old. Oh, so sweet. And, uh, you know, as soon as mother, mother held Priya, How lucky. Priya started talking, you know, in baby language, but right. she never said anything. And she went on and on, I'm serious, for the six longest, five or six longest minutes. That's how it seemed to me, like an eternity. And mother was going, huh, huh, huh. And then when Priya stopped her baby talk, yeah. mother told and looked at me and she said, 
she's told me everything. <laughs> and you can imagine what I thought. Oh, good God, what did she say? <laughs> there were lots more photos, but I won't show you that. But anyway, that was the end result of getting married. So, right, so that here was the baby who talked to mother, but most of the Yuva, the little children, were mm. fantastic. And here is one who was born a couple of, a few years before Priya, who was an amazing child. Now, his dad, whom you know as Gregoire, uh -huh. asked him to me because he had, he was babysitting at that time in one of these seminars. And he said, oh, you know, hold the children out. And I said, oh, sure. I'm not kidding. I thought, oh, I'll take this baby to look at some flowers because I used to always go into a state of meditation. Mm -hmm. And I carried him and I just felt these vibrations. Yeah. And I went completely silent. And we both went, uh, this is later, but we both went and stood and just looked at these flowers. The, you know, English roses are beautiful. Mm. And we were in complete silence. And later on, when I was walking around with him, uh, someone took this photograph. And that is uh, Nachindranath, who is now a grown man with children. Yes. Yeah, in Switzerland. Yeah. Wow. Amazing. Yeah. yeah the, the, those little, those children of the yogis, I mean, they are. It's very interesting like how you were talking about Srimataji's. Uh, conversation or Priya's conversation with uh, Sri Mataji as a one-month-old baby and uh, this photo of Machindranath which um, you know which transported you to meditative states. Oh, I'm telling you that child if, he's, if he ever watches this I hope he's disciplining himself so he returns to those states. I know he's very good I've met him and his vibes are still good, but not as good as when you were a baby. <laughs> no, that's that's just pure, pure life, innocence, you know? isn't it? Yeah. Life and responsibilities. Yes. That's, uh, so you have other things to to pay attention to. Yes. True. It's, uh... And then this is Pratishtan, where mother was when mother was designing uh, Pratishtan. So those are the blueprints there. Uh -huh. and, uh, so this was so we got married in January and then we stayed on a little bit then we went to England and then came back for mother's birthday I believe so we were we were here for a few weeks and uh, we were fortunate that uh, she let us stay with her uh, so whereabouts so, is this this design that's being this is all in Pune it's in Pune it, it's in Pune yeah so that is small the, altar uh, there isn't it John and then the on the yeah. side so, so that's the architect there. Uh -huh. and, um, it's I always used to find it funny that people put a photograph of mother, you know, in a room where mother is. I mean, she's already there, mm. uh, but that, you know, that's Bala. Um, she definitely does not need it. But anyway, so the, the poor architect had a tough time because we were there do it for a part of it. And mother would always send him away with a new plan and then he'd come back having redrawn it and then she'd change it again. Wow. He would be quite perplexed. But he was a yogi, so he was fine. And uh, he, he is just, uh, I've moved further back. Oh, that's Dumal, who used to be the leader of uh, Rahuri. Uh -huh. uh, he'd done a lot of Sahaj work there and his family. And that's Rajani um, a month or two after we got married. Oh. I don't know who this man is, but I, I, I've i seen him on the tours. Okay, wow. Yeah. Beautiful. And then a few weeks, or one week later, it looks like, a uh, different day, uh, mother is changing the plans again. Reviewing <laughs> 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 the changes mm -hmm. that she gave him. I think his name was Patankar or something like that. And, Patankar, uh, yes. Uh, yeah, yeah Patankar. Name rings yeah. A bell. Yes, yes, Patankar. Yeah, so that was Parishan, and um, you know, when Mother built it, she gave us a tour of the place some years later, and was seeing how she wanted the uh, it to be a museum of Sahaj Yoga, and she uh -huh. showed us the upper floor and was telling Rajni and me her plans and so on. So way at the beginning, she'd already planned for it to be wow. a museum for Sahaj Yoga of all the things. You know, relate to it and all the gifts she was given that yes that were meant to be placed there 
And uh, this was uh, March 86, uh, during the birthday week uh, that uh, we had public. Did we in Delhi? Uh, no, no, all this was uh, going on in Pune. Oh, I see, okay. Yeah, yeah. The, the Pune, was, there was a lot going on that, mm. that time period, at least from my memory. I'm hoping it's correct. It, um, when Rajni comes back, I'll make sure, and then we can stick a correction underneath. Okay. Uh, so we were staying in Mother's Place. Uh, sorry, so this is, sorry, Kalvar was for the puja. Okay, yes, the New Year's puja used to happen in Kalvar. Yeah, so it's Kalvar. So on a birthday morning, uh, we, was, we were there, and Mother was sitting on a sofa and talking to uh, one of the local yogis. Mm. Actually, a couple of them had come in to visit. And then you know, asking them to feel the vibrations and working on them. With the flash, the sofa color looks a little different, but... Uh... Mm -hmm. Wow, Dishmata. Yeah, those eyes, those are the... Oh, and this was the birthday puja. And uh, maybe you can tell me what or who mother is looking at up there after the puja? <laughs> well, it doesn't need There's to be told, actually. It's so obvious. That came to visit here. Yeah. So beautiful, my. Oh, it's beautiful isn't an adequate word. Yeah, yeah, I know. Just no words in the language. Ah, this is okay. So Bob Dylan. So I was. You know, before Saraj, I was listening to Bob Dylan and really liking all his lyrics. And there's a song called Shelter from the Storm. Mm -hmm. And when I heard the lyrics after Saraj, when I reheard them, I would, I thought, this guy is writing about Mataji. And uh, anyone who would like to go online and uh, look at the lyrics. So Rajni also had heard it, of course. <laughs> yeah, she had to heard, she had to listen to quite a bit of my decadent music after we got married, and um, she she wrote this out. She wrote all the lyrics down, and I made a tape recording of it, and um, and uh, I went to see mother, and at that time again the front room was full of uh, Indian leaders, you know, discussing programs and problems and whatnot in their centers. And uh, we kind of made our way through the people. Uh, they were waiting for mother, and we made our way to, to her bedroom. And we went in, and uh, she wanted to listen to it there and then while the leaders were still waiting outside. So we, we, I think we brought a tape, rec a little tape recorder with us. So we played uh, Shelter from the Storm for mother. And uh, she listened to the whole thing while she was reading the lyrics. And then she said, uh, absolutely, it was about her. And she even said that uh, he wrote it when she first visited America, which was not when she was doing Sahaj programs. Amazing. That is yeah. amazing. Yeah, in the early days, uh, when I came, uh, some of the old yogis told me that uh, they'd asked mother about some of the musicians they listened to. And they told her, uh, they particularly about, uh, she, apparently she replied that Bob Dylan and mm. Eric Clapton, I'm not talking about in the 70s, uh, one of them was realized and one of them was awakened. I don't remember which was which. So we know that, you know, the song that he wrote was, is special. The, the whole tune, the way he, he sings it in his ras raspy voice, and uh, the lyrics are very moving. So something worth listening to. Yeah, it brings to mind one of the poems that I can't think, I mean, it's a song that uh, is taught as a poem in uh, A-level equivalent syllabus in India, in uh, Shramataji's school in Dharamshala. And um, one had the um, privilege to teach it to the students and the futility of war, given what's happening today, I mean, He's really pictured it so well, how uh, 
um the mother sends her young son you know um in the hope that you know it will bring it will bring pride and honor to the family and the medals and stuff which is so um meaningless but because when the son returns from the war he's lost his uh limbs totally disfigured and uh, then he hands the medals to her uh, to his mom and uh, yeah and just keeps walking away she couldn't recognize her own son so it's a lovely touching poem and you can see that yes it, it it's not just any ordinary um poet singer artist yes yes and he was definitely very special uh Bob Dylan, and uh, yeah, and you know the last. I mean, all the verses are are so relatable to Sri Masji. Yes. But but the last verse was is simply, you know, is mind blowing. He at the end he says, "If only I could turn back the clock." So he says, "If only I could turn back the clock to when God and she were born." Wow. I mean, you know, the recognition or the understanding was just... Uh, wow. Yeah. Well, we'll have to listen to that song. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> and here, of course, I used to always find this funny. Mother reads the books about herself and says, all right, read these names. <laughs> <laughs> and she goes through it carefully. <laughs> I mean, if you want to talk about Maya, I mean, she really... You know, yeah. plays it all so Whereabouts perfectly. is this? It's a lovely throne as well. Oh, I, I, I'm afraid I can't. Uh, That's okay. One of the yo older yogis who sees it will recognize the chair and so on. It's and, a beautiful and, photo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and and there's, one, what, there's one photo that has come down purely by accident. I think it's going to... It was supposed to be somewhere else, but I, I have not used PowerPoint since I... Stopped working in the corporate world almost 25 years ago and, uh -huh. you know, went to small company, uh, you know, worked for myself for 20 plus years, 20 years ago, worked for myself. So I, I might have pushed uh, pictures to the wrong place, but um, let me try it with the, oh, this one. Uh, somehow, suddenly mother started tearing during the same event. And uh, I just found it so moving. It's like the compassion for her children and the state of the world. I have no idea what, but I was there with my telephoto. And uh, which year is this, Uncle? This is uh, this is after we got married. So I think you know after eighty eighty six in the eighties. I'll I'll find out the dates. In due course, we'll, okay. right. we'll do justice to all these things. It might be earlier, I'm not sure. And so what I did was I saw Mother's face and I and I wanted to see what the rest of the divine body was doing. So I took her hands, close up of her hands at that time. And then of her feet. Wow. So you can see they've just been, you know. <laughs> Yeah. Tell me, when I took these photographs out, I was, I didn't need anything else for quite some time. It was not only fully satisfying, but very joy giving. And this is Mother at uh, Stonehenge. This is uh, chronologically, it's out of uh, sequence. It's actually from 1980. And uh, the way it worked was uh, the TM movement, I told you in 79, they came uh, to Cincinnati when we had the breakthrough. And uh, from then on, you know, TM sort of went downhill and these people helped to, these yogis helped to expose uh, the terrible things they were, that were done. And two of the top four leaders came to Sarge. Only one stayed, uh, the other one eventually left. But a lot of the teachers and so on came to Saj as well. So, um, you know, it made quite a change. Anyway, in 1980, uh, one of the directors who, who was with us and was saying how great Stonehenge was. And they were, they were saying that um, there were great vibrations there. 
So I think we were doing a tour of the south of England again this time. And he was quite insistent. Um, they were all quite insistent. They're not like uh, we earlier batch of yogis who let mother decide what we did or where to go. Um, that group seemed to feel here are the places we should go. And mother, you know, allowed her children to have a little leeway. So we made our way to uh, quite a few cars went full of yogis. And uh, we made our way to Stonehenge. And we walked up there. And uh, these yogis, uh, the former TM and, and others put their hands up. And this chap said, uh, who had brought mother, um, uh, there are no vibrations, mother, there are no vibrations. And then mother smiles and she said, uh, that's because out of respect for me, respect for me, they are not emitting their vibration, she said. I have to give them permission. And then she looked at the stones and a few seconds later she said, okay. And then the stones started emitting vibrations. Wow. Amazing, Uncle. I think that's an amazing story. We'll that take was, a pause. That was just, I tell you, everybody was yeah. just in complete silence. Of course, yes. It's it's a phenomenal photo and, and really, really beautiful, given not just the location, but the importance of it all, isn't it? Yeah, she, you know, she, like some of the names say, you know, she can open and close the door to realization. She turns it on and off because it all comes from that source. Absolutely. Um, the master programmer and the source of the power generation. Yeah. On, on that same trip, so I, I was with mother in the back seat. On that same trip, I, I may have mentioned it in the previous, uh, in the much of last year's video, whenever. Um, we were driving back and I was sitting with mother. She was on my right. Uh, and um, this guy again was saying that, uh, who was driving us, nice guy. I mean, I don't want it to sound like he wasn't. Um, he was saying that, uh, he was complaining about the forest fires because we had a lot of forest fires. Uh, so looking at the motorway, to the west of the motorway, uh, some of the forest was burning and had been for several days. And uh, he said, you know, we haven't had rain. And mother's response was, Ah, oh, but you know, there are lots of trees in England, you know, uh, something like, you know, it doesn't really matter. And he was really concerned and he kept saying, oh, you know, the fires are bad. So I, I looked at mother because I thought, you know, it, it, he's going on a bit. And mother looked out of the window. She looked to the right. She looked out of the window. And in the far distance, there was some thin, uh, there were some clouds. And, um, she just looked at the clouds and for non-yogis, it'll be hard to believe, the clouds started moving towards the car at an amazing speed. I am not joking. And mother was following them or I should say directing them with her eyes. And she turned her head from the right upwards and we got back. You know, she didn't say anything. He stopped talking for a while and we got back uh, to her place and the uh, next day on the news they said there was unexpected rain and the forest fires had been put out amazing amazing story and speechless is this <laughs> the power and um to be a witness to that Wow. <laughs> you know what, what the, the other the other aspect of it is that it was something that from mother's view was unnecessary because England had too much too many trees. But because one of her children requested it, she bent the rules and went ahead and satisfied him. Amazing. Only a mother can do that. Yep. Yeah. Okay, Uncle. On this note, I think we'll conclude this session. I think so. I think it's perfect. And I think you're, yeah. you have uh, tasks to take care of being a mother and a, um, and a wife. And a also, it's nearly half 20 years to get someone to feed the family. <laughs>
<laughs> it's lovely to talk to you. Uh, thank you so um, much. Our and, regards uh, and we, love we, to we you. And to, to, our, to our illusory world where we still have duties to perform. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much, Uncle. Thank, thank you so much. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye.